Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, it was actually um, pretty warm and pretty dry, um, like Wichita West. Uh, we had winds 30 to 40 miles an hour all weekend. I really pushed the storms east of us, and I'm really sorry to see that um, the tornadoes touched down in Arkansas and did a lot of damage. So it is that time of the year uh, where once a week we can expect major outbreaks of storm. It's really starting late this year uh, due to all this global warming we're experiencing in the plains and north of us. So um, thank goodness for storm shelters and uh, as early a warning as you can get on tornadoes. It's really, 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 really hard, though, to um, uh, predict tornadoes where they're going to touch down. They're very, very localized. They do a lot of damage, but the footprint's usually uh, less than about 10 miles and less than a quarter of a mile wide. It's hell inside that footprint, but uh, they are pretty, um, pretty localized for the most part. Every now and then you get a huge one, and we do see those in the plains, but... Um, that's not the, <clears throat> not the norm. Uh, most of them hitting farmland. So anyway, um, tough to see what happened in Arkansas. Uh, we need the moisture uh, desperately. Uh, west of Wichita, the wheat crop is getting stressed. Uh, it's starting to turn yellow in parts of the field. Great portions of the field have that kind of blue-green color, which is the first sign of stress. So uh, that will add to food costs uh, if we don't start getting some rains, too. Okay, it is Monday morning. It is a huge news week. We have the ADP number and uh, FOMC announcement on Wednesday. They're expected to cut another $10 billion out of their support for the markets. Uh, we have Friday's non-farm payroll number where they're looking for 200,000 jobs added to the economy. Uh, people in the government have quit talking about the housing sector, which is really softening up. Uh, in a hurry. And the reason for this is that you took Wall Street money uh, out of the real estate markets in California, Arizona, Nevada, and Florida, uh, where they were buying up homes, rent to sell later on down the road. Uh, Wall Street did their uh, job. They got all those packaged in a nice, pretty package, and they've done IPOs, so they've gotten their money back. they profited. Uh, they own the stocks, and there's nothing for upside for them. Okay, we have a B pattern in the overnight session. Uh, it is Monday morning. The tendency uh, after an auction week is for prices to be lower, setting up the 3, 10, and 30-year auction uh, week, after, uh, week after this. Uh, we've got volume at 27. Uh, we've got potential support starting at 28, but I think because of the strength in the E-mini, we might be a little lower. So I put my first buy at 21 to 25, and then 17 or better for buy two. Uh, because we're dealing with a B, I've got the first sell, 31 to 03. It's pretty aggressive. But uh, it is Monday morning, and things are going to be pretty quiet. Uh, pending home sales, I've seen it as high as a percent. Uh, Econo Day has it carried at plus six tenths. Dallas Fed, which usually has no impact on the market, is carried at plus six. So I think it's going to be down to the direction of the E-mini. Now, when the E-mini and stock markets are supported by mergers and acquisitions, we have corporations sitting on tremendous stacks of cash. Uh, they don't want to invest domestically here in the United States because they don't see a pickup in revenues when you get right down to it. Uh, but they have all this cash out there. So uh, the first to start the M&A game in whatever sect in it hap sector it happens to be uh, usually is the one that picks up the plum prize, and the others are left to scramble. So right now it's in the drug industry, and uh, there's a $97 billion offer on the table uh, for, I think, Astra uh, from Pfizer, and GE has a $13 billion offer on the table, which has been countered for a French company, and I frankly don't know what they make. 
Uh, so m and because corporations are sitting on a lot of cash, it's either buy back my own stock or go out and uh, buy a business that fits my strategic business plan. And this merger and acquisition tends to hold the stock market in a range. So uh, that's what we're going to face this morning. So I think the direction of the e mini this morning will probably tell the tale of, our, of today's tape. And um, that's it for the note. Now, if I've um, overestimated the weakness of the market, the buy is going to move up to 25 to 29. But right now, we're going to leave it at 21 to 25 because the market is pointed lower. Uh, if you wanted a price that you could execute at, leaning against that high volume number, 27, 28, um, will get you in at a high volume number, which uh, minus news usually means you're going to trade around it for an hour or so. Okay, the knob spread came in uh, several ticks over the several 30 seconds over the weekend, but it's still at 10 plus. Um, The yield curve is flattening. And these are actual votes. The, this is money put into the market. Uh, and uh, when the yield curve flattens, uh, normally the yield curve should be uh, the back end is higher than the front end by its normal historical um, measures. When it flattens out, it means uncertainty. It means that people are starting to question whether the economy can grow. Um, and when it goes inverse, uh, then you are in a recession slash depression. So right now, the, a lot of money is being bet that the economy is moving into um, slower economic growth and or a recession. Okay, here we are at 20. Uh, the high volume number is at 24. So the aggressive sell is 23 to 27. That's a very aggressive sell, but it's where the, what the structure dictates. And then 31 to 03 will be sell 2. On the buy side, we've got all this volume down at 10, so we'll make 9 to 13. We may have to pay up. It may be 17 to get in, but to start out, we're going to go for 9 to 13. Think the market's going to sell first. And then 1 to 5 for buy 2. Okay, hey, looking at gold, gold was, uh, when I looked at it a couple hours ago, was uh, I think up a dollar from Friday's close. It's come back, uh, selling a little bit. Okay, uh, the big news for gold probably is what's going to happen in the Ukraine. Uh, G7 is going to announce sanctions this week. Uh, the uh, chatter uh, on the financial news is, is that they're going after Putin's reported 40 to 70 billion dollars uh, spirited or stashed away in Switzerland or other places um, and if you hurt the Russian leaders and oligarchs make it hard for them to move their money around and the rest of it uh, that's probably the fastest way to uh, get their attention, but I don't think it's going to change anything. The United States doesn't sell a hell of a lot to Russia, uh, nor does Europe. Europe gets a lot of natural gas from them, so um, it's not. There really isn't much you can do other than go after the uh, oligarchs' uh, holdings. Okay, we uh, left Friday wanting to sell the um, uh, three to five area, and. Uh, the market held at 05, so we got a seller from 5 to 7 for sure. Uh, we're at 99 right now, so we'll make 3 to 5, sell 1, 8 to 10, sell 2. On the buy side, we've got the single print and this breakout down here at 96, so we'll make 95, 97, buy 1, and then 
90, 92 by 2. Um, there was a uh, Ukrainian mayor shot uh, over the weekend. Nobody said it was attempted assassination or he just got caught in the crossfire, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that he was shot. So the world, the way crude oil and gold are acting and the way treasuries are acting, uh, uh, don't say that um, uh, the Ukraine situation is going to get any worse. Okay, taking a look at the euro, the euro is, euro is up strong uh, this morning. Um, the Not a single piece of news to tie to it, but most people's guess, guesses uh, sent on the fact that the uh, sanctions against Russia will be minimal. Uh, Europe will be able to get through this uh, crisis with Russia. They're going to maintain their energy. And, and Europe will pay whatever they have to to get that done. Uh, the Ukraine's already gotten approval with the blessings of the Europe and the United States for an IMF loan of $17 billion. Uh, don't have to write an actual check for it, but uh, you can put the guarantees up and, again, kick the can down the road. So... Um, the euro is strong. I'm sure Draghi's pulling his hair out every time he gets up and talks. Um, the euro's got to be lower. It's got to be lower for all the, all the right reasons, and it rallies. So uh, there's some folks that are caught short. So 34 is where the London low was, and the market rallied up to 80. So we'll play uh, right here. We'll make 70 to 80 sell one on the idea that most of the news is behind us and we're going to make 139 sell two plus or minus. On the buy side, the breakout came from 42 or 59, so we'll start with 30 to 42 for buy one. And then um, our 15 to 25 for buy two. Yeah, it's um, the, the euro, and, and again, the um, uh, if they want to really hurt the euro, Draghi's got to come out and make some cuts uh, in something. They got to re put more liquidity into it. Buy back paper, which their charter does not allow them to do. Uh, he has to do something. Uh, he's been trying jawboning, and jawboning hasn't worked at all. So. What can the European Central Bank do without changing its charter uh, to improve the liquidity or show some, some positive action to take the euro down? The easiest way to take the euro down is to decrease interest rates. They're already pretty low. So you can get a little burst out of that, but it, they don't have a lot of wiggle room. Interest rates are already low. Kind of like a, what can the Fed do? Take the interest rates from a quarter to zero? Now, they can inject, they can buy more bonds and do stuff like that, but they can't do much more than that. Okay, crude oil's up a little bit. Uh, there was some shooting over the weekend. There are hostages being taken in the Ukraine, uh, back both sides. Uh, so we got pretty good buying. Uh, we left wanting to buy the um, 100, 125 area, uh, 50 help. So we've got a pretty good buying once again below the 75. I've been trying to buy against 100 because it's a round number without success. So and then on the sell side, um, 101.50, uh, pretty aggressive. It's where resistance is. So we'll make 50 to 75 sell one. And then 102, 102 and a quarter for sell two. Back to our old numbers. And to the E-mini, it is Monday morning, uh, the biggest 
um, news driving the stock markets is the merger and acquisition news um, as opposed to pumping their all that excess cash into stock buybacks they go buy companies this if you're in a company that potentially is a target for somebody to take over you don't sell your stock uh, you hold it that stabilizes the stock market and so when the business or economic outlook gets soft and if corporations have a lot of cash on hand and they're not investing it directly in their business or stock buybacks they go buy go buy other companies and this keeps people from selling so we've got volume in the e-mini up here Okay, the um, so the stock market got pretty good buying. Fitz, I did see your email. Um, I did s send it on to Peter uh, with my ideas on it. So um, we'll see what Peter has to say. Fitz, any uh, news out of Europe to explain the euro strength? Damn, I cannot get the e-mini to come up. F2, right here, E-mini. Hopefully third time's a charm. Ah, success. So uh, we've got this merger and acquisition that will stabilize the stock market in and of itself. Uh, rather than buying back stock, they're going to buy other companies. And that makes people that have companies that are ripe for takeover or buyouts reluctant to sell a stock, and it stabilizes the market. Okay, we had volume right here at 55, 57. That held. Uh, the selling that started in London the other day started out of 73, then failure to hold 80. So we've got this 73, 75 is probably pretty good resistance. We've got this dent in the volume at 70. So near resistance is 69 to 71. That's sell one. That's just where it is. Get it stops above the overnight session high, and then 74, 76 will be sell two. Uh, we came in last week. Uh, started talking on it Wednesday about uh, we're in the 1875 area. Um, 50-point correction from 75 would take us down to 20. We had a high volume number at 37, 38, 40. So buying 40, 25 or 40 puts was a good play. Um, that got us down to a low of 53 right down here. And so far, the market is held. So uh, right now, uh, I think the news this week will tend to hold us in a trading range. But the uh, best news we have right now is the Pfizer um, offer to purchase, um, and I forget the name, pardon me, a uh, company in Europe, um, for $97 billion. And we have a GE offer out for $13 billion for a French company. So uh, the news today, penny home sales should have no impact on the market, neither should the Dallas Fed. So I think we're dealing with a trading range and willing to sell the uh, 70, 75 area. And on the buy side, uh, we've got, uh, we're at 67 right now, so our first buy is going to be in this 60, 62 area. And we'll adjust that as the day goes in 55, 57. 10 billion taper is expected on Wednesday. Uh, I haven't, I didn't look at the ADP number. Um, AstraZeneca, thank you. Um, 
Friday's non-farm payroll looking for 200,000 jobs. Uh, so the news, those are the expectations for the news. And I don't think those will change. But it'll, everything should tend to hold us in the trading range this market the, today. So that's the way I see it. It's going to take me at least 15 minutes to get everything up. So I'm going to go get busy on that. Um, see you in a few.